Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, hi. We've already got people in the in the chat here already. So, uh, hi there to uh, Jazz and uh, Rhonda, Kimberly, and uh, Jennifer. Hi there. Nice to see you. Um, I wanted to first of all start off by explaining, and hi Shane, yeah, I wanted to first of all explain what you know, why the warning adult content, these images um, of true crime scripts, true crime scenes are truly horrendous. Um, fortunately for me, um, I'm not too squeamish, but as I say, they are particularly bad images. Hi Julie. Um, and I suppose, you know, why adult warning? Hi, Donna. Why adult warning? Because, you know, the images are so bad. But I suppose, in fairness, the whole case, this whole scenario is is of such an adult nature. You know, hi there, I don't recall. You know, when you're trying to frame two innocent people, you're trying to bury them alive. You know, is there anything worse than trying to bury two people alive? Um, you know, I, it's it, the whole the whole case, of course, is is of a very adult nature. But as I say, the, these images, um, you know, probably somewhat similar to the ones that were on the Dassey computer, so they are pretty horrific. But this is this is what obviously Ken Kratz and the state want people to have in mind when they, you know, when when they. Uh, uh, had their press conference and you know and the trial and everything so anyway let's uh, let's just go straight in as i say i'm fortunately i'm not too squeamish um i remember as a, as a kid the first time i uh, i ever had stitches I, I came back one sunday afternoon just before lunchtime and i said mum can i get a plaster for this scratch on my wrist um the, the cut was so deep um immediately taken to hospital 11 stitches in this cut in my wrist uh, came back absolutely starving because it was just before sunday lunch so i had my lunch and apparently uh mum and dad said that, you know that i ate their lunch as well because i was so hungry and apparently they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't he eat their lunch because of what had happened with the, the wrist anyway um as i say i fell off my bike put my hand down there was broken broken milk bottle glass and i've still got the um Still got the scar down down the wrist there, very close to the vein. So I suppose that's why they were they were so uh, concerned, shall we say? Um, as I say, I've not really been a, a squeamish person. As a kid, I used to play rugby, um, and some some of the some of the kids quite big, they would faint at the sight of blood. We know that Brendan faints at the sight of blood. Um, yeah, it's not pleasant, but. Uh, if somebody is uh, is bleeding, then you know you, at least you can do something about it. Anyway, um, let's have a look and see all the horrific things that Brendan and Steve did to Teresa. Um, well, actually, I think what we'll start off with is this. Yeah, here we go. Here was a, a message I got this morning. Let's just make sure everything's working as it should do. And hopefully the sound is okay. Um, hopefully the sound is okay. Um, yeah, a bit, a bit of static, but unfortunately there's not a lot. I can do about that. Uh, it seems to be okay. Um, so as I say, I woke up this morning. This is a, an old video uh, making a murderer. Stephen Avery told so many lies, he must be guilty. Got a message from somebody who calls himself the cat. He did it. Brendan told the truth. There's no, there's so much more evidence than what's in MAM. Rug cleaner one let's let's have a look then let's have a look at this i think we're <laughs> i must admit I, I did i 
I did think about the parallels of uh, T1 once saying to me, you know, is this uh, is this your Bible study group? And it's almost like, uh, you know, we're going to read from page, you know, 56 to 62. It's a little bit like a Bible reading on a Sunday afternoon at Sunday school. But anyway, it's not. It's uh, it's it's kind of more serious than that. So anyway, let's have a look at, uh, as I say, this is uh, March 1st. Um, Transcript of March 1st, Fassbender. Go ahead, bud. Brendan, um, he that he was on the other side and we had to unhook the, ch ch the the hands and tied her up. We get. So you helped unhook her hands. And what exactly did you do? Tell me exactly what you did, Brendan. I got the key for the lock and unlocked it. And after I grabbed her arm, put it on the side and tied her up. We get what arm? Her left, uh, right one. We get so you grab her arm and you do what with it? Put it on the side like this. I put the rope right there. Did you tie her up in front or behind? Did you tie her? I guess I want to say, did you tie her hands? Yeah, in front of her body, in front. How? Like this or like this? Show us. Like this. Okay. What is she saying at this time? Or is Stephen telling her something? What's he telling her? She was saying, saying to stop doing what he was. Stop saying, you know. She's not screaming. She's not screaming for her life. She's just saying, excuse, excuse me, Steve, Brendan, could you, could you kindly desist from what you're doing? Um, and what's he saying? Uh, that he wouldn't. He wouldn't stop what he's doing. What's he saying, though? I mean, what, what's, 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 what words is he using? Is he swearing at her? What is he saying? He told her to shut her mouth. Is he telling her that he's going to kill her? Is he telling her he's going to let her go? What's he telling her? And I think this is important. You know, is he going to kill her or is he going to let her go? Um, then he was going to kill her. Okay, so you tie her up. Then what happens? Then we get the other rope and tie her legs up. How do you do that? Around the bottom, like, like where the... Show me on you where he does that, where you guys do that. Right here. Oh, who ties her legs up? He does. Do you help? Otherwise, she's going to kick. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. Did you help or not? Yes or no? Uh, yeah, nods. Okay, tell me how you did that. Uh, I held I held her feet down. Held her feet down, Brendan, Brendan nods, yes. What did Steve do? He tied her legs up. Is this on the bed? Nods, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then what happens? He told me to grab her feet and we took her outside. Is she still alive? No, she was unconscious. Uh, okay, okay. You got her tied up. She's, when you're getting her tied up, is she, is she alive or has she choked it already? He choked her already. Did he choke her when she had the handcuffs on? Yeah, okay. When did he stab her? Uh, when, uh, before he choked her. You sure about that? And yeah. So she's laying there, handcuffs on, and that's when Steve stabs her. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then he chokes her after that. Yeah. Are you sure, Brenda? Yeah. Where exactly did you stab her again? In the stomach. Was it in the chest or the stomach? Well, sort of in the ribs. And what did you use to stab her? A knife. Where did he get the knife from? From the kitchen. And um, what? How, how big was the knife? Show us. About like that. About that big. And you got it. And he got it out of the kitchen. When he went in there, did he threaten her with her life? Did he just go right and do it? What did he do? That he threatened her. Tell us what he said. That he was going to kill her by stabbing her and not letting her go. Because stabbing somebody and not letting her go are equally bad. 
And of course, isn't it interesting about the, you know, what are you going to kill her or are you going to let her go? Brendan, are we, he, he, that he was going to kill her by stabbing her and not letting her go. Okay, so they're equally as bad, okay? We go, what else did he do to her? We, we know something else has done. Tell us, what else, what else did you do? Come on, something with a head, Brendan. Uh, can't, what else did you guys do? Come on. What he made you do, Brendan, we know he made you do something else. What is it? What is it? Uh, we have the evidence, Brendan. We just need you, you to, 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 to be honest with us. That he cut off her hair. He cut off her hair in the house. Mm -hmm. Why did he do that? Why did he? Was, was, she, was she alive? No. What did he do with the hair? Um, he set it down on the counter. The counter where? Uh, like a dresser. What did he use to cut the net, the hair off with? The knife. Was she alive? Brendan, no. Did he say why he did that? No. Okay, what else? What else has done with her head? Um, oh, he, he punched her. What else? What, what else? He made you do something to her, didn't he? So he, 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 he would feel better about not being the only person, right? Brendan, yeah. Mm-hmm. What else? What did he make you do to her? What did he make you do, Brendan? It's okay. What did he make you do? Cut her. Cut her where? On her throat. Cut her throat? Uh, when, when, did that, when did that happen? Uh, before he picked her off the bed. So she, she was alive, yeah? Right? Yeah. So she's alive and you cut her throat? Mm-hmm. Was that before or after Steve stabbed her? After. It was after Steve stabbed her. Mm-hmm. Was um, she, uh, how, how, how do you know she was still alive? Tell me. When you cut her throat, how do you know she was still alive? She was breathing a little bit. She was breathing a little bit. Did Steve tell you to do that? Yeah. Uh, how, how, how do he tell you to do what? How, how do he tell you what to do? What, what, what do he say? To go across her throat and pull it back. Did he say why he wanted you to do that? No, nah, no. Nah. Which knife did you use? Uh, the, the same one, the same one that he stabbed her with. And how many times did he stab her again? Once? Are you sure about that? Couldn't have been more, could it? So Steve stabs her first, and then you cut her neck. Yeah. What else happens with her head? It's extremely, extremely important. You tell us this for us to believe you. Come on, Brendan, what else? We know. We just need you to tell us. Uh, that's all I can remember. All right. I'm just going to come out and ask you. Who shot her in the head? Oh, he, oh, oh, yeah, he did. Then why didn't you tell us that? Because um, I couldn't really be bothered to think of it. Now you remember? Tell us about that then. Oh, that he sh shot her with his 22. You were there, though. Obviously, it's just, um, <laughs> do I do the script for EastEnders? I could do, couldn't I? Yeah. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, but this whole theory that, you know, this blood could have been cleaned up using Rug Doctor, it just, just beggars belief, doesn't it? Um, as I say, I've just finished watching the um, the, the, the night, uh, well, the Jinx and Night Stalker. In the, in the Jinx, we uh, we start off, don't we, with this dismembered body of Morris Black, and uh, very quickly, the detectives are able to go to the house. They detect blood that was spilt on these hard surfaces leading to the house um, and obviously they go into this one room and they even re remove a, a section of flooring and they're able to find uh, the blood 
straight away. Um, now, I must admit, in the, in the case of the Night Stalker, um, you've got similarly horrendous horrendous crime scenes. Um, and I must admit, um, I remember in, in in some conversations, and I'm and I'm sure the dude has even mentioned had, had mentioned this in in previous videos about the fact that you know that he, he knew exactly what he would do if if there was ever somebody threatened to either abduct abduct him or somebody else, or you know what you know what the plan of action would be. Um, and and I must admit, I always I always was a bit skeptical. It's like, dude, you you, you really think that's going to happen? Um, and, and I do apologize because I didn't realize how close to home the night stalker was um, in, in when one one of one of the one of the victims, I think more on more than one occasion, was very close to where the dude went to high school. So uh, so I, I can I can appreciate now, although I didn't back then and I do apologize, but I do appreciate now just how concerning it was to uh, to the dude. You know this this night stalker and probably others. I mean, I think I think in the whole of California, they have something like a thousand, at least a thousand homicides a year, um, and some of them are, are as are as horrible as the. Oh look, look, they're all horrible, aren't they? You know that's what we're saying. You know, there's there's no one murder that's worse than another one. That they're all they're all equally grotesque. Um, but we do know that the human body normal human body has between one and one and a half gallons of blood um and as i say i i was wondering whether whether to put this up these pictures up images of crime scenes and dead bodies um all i can say is that i do remember when the dude was looking at uh, michael peterson and the staircase um, and he looked at other incidences of people that have fallen downstairs and have lost a lot of blood just to you know, bang in the head on the, the, the surrounds, and the amount of bleeding, the amount of blood that comes out just of the, you know, you know from damages to the to the skin of the head. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll just show you the pictures because you know the, 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 look, these these are just random pictures. I'm not trying to be vulgar like Ken Kratz in his press conference. But remember that in Ken Kratz's press conference, these are the sort of images that he is trying to paint. These are the, the image. This is the story that he's trying to tell. This, this, is, this is what the, the press conference, the bizarre press conference, was all about. You know, you've got really vulgar crime scenes um, th these are just as I say random photographs that I took off the off the internet you know just blood all all over the carpet you know how on earth you're going to get that off with rug doctor I have no idea we've got there we've got blood on a on a vinyl floor just blood spatter everywhere you know it's going to seep into the cracks I mean this is a vinyl floor you you know you could possibly clean that up a wee bit, um, but you, but you're never, never, ever gonna gonna get rid of all of that. Well, sort of. Oh well, yeah. More 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 typical. The, the, this is the sort of image that they're trying to present. Um, you know, the, the grotesque, all this blood on the mattress, on the pillows, uh, how it would have seeped through everywhere. There's another typical you know, blood stained mattress, complete with a bookcase. And you're going to use, and I think, I think I might be saying that this is actually a genuine photograph, crime scene photograph from the Richard M M Ramirez case. You know, it, uh, 
I'm afraid it just gets worse with the amount of blood everywhere. You know, if you're going to cut somebody's throat, that blood is going to spatter everywhere. You know, and it's going to seep through. You know, this is somebody lifting up the other side of the mattress and look at the amount of blood that's seeped through. Again, you know, blood on the walls, on the floor, on the carpet, on the bedding. It's going to be everywhere. And it's going to be trailed outside, you know, through doors. Because if, you know, if, if they're carrying, you know, carrying um, Teresa through, you know, uh, I mean, apparently, you know, thanks to the fact that she had lost so much blood already, she must have been so light that they were able to literally throw her into the back of the raft or where they do find blood. And they find this spatter on, on the back door. Here's another one of a crime scene. They're, they're just so typical, aren't they? Just blood everywhere. Okay. Yeah. As I say, these were just random photographs that I took off the off the internet, just typed in uh, crime scene photographs, bedrooms, um, and these all came up. Um, what else have we got? That's number 12. Else? This is number 12. You know, uh, blood on the doors, you know, on the floor, but it seeped into all the cracks. It's. Uh, You can't just you can't just hoover it up, and I'm afraid these are where we get the the more obscene images of you know some people that have crime scene photographs of people that have been killed. Again, I think this is a Richard M R Ramirez crime scene. Blood on the walls everywhere. As I say, I do apologise because they get even more graphic. But this is exactly, this is exactly the scene that they are trying to present us, that the Ken Kratz and the prosecution are trying to present happened in Steve's little bedroom. And if, you know, if they could have got, if they could have got, oh, this is a bloke with blood everywhere, you know. If they could have got Brendan to be even more descriptive, you can imagine there would have been even worse, you know, that person just covered in blood. You know, th this last one, I think, I think this is the last one and then we'll move on. This is horrific, you know. Somebody completely dismembered, body parts cut off, parts of, parts of the, you know, the body cut off. I'm, I'm not going to even enlarge it because it's just grotesque to look at. But this, this is exactly, this is exactly the image that they are trying, trying to present to people. Um, you know, these absolutely appalling. Ken Kratz tries to paint this appalling picture. We get in Fassbender, try and get Brendan to give us this kind of crime scene, this horrendous, appalling crime scene. Um, you know, trying to paint a picture. And you've got Wiegert saying, well, they have five days to clear up. Using Rug Doctor, Sherry finds zero, zero um, of, you know, Teresa's DNA anywhere. You know, yeah, and e even that, you know, the five, the five days to clear up. Um, if my, you know, we can't even do the maths. Monday night that they have the bonfire when supposedly she's burned. So the earliest he can start cleaning up is Monday night. So you're basically into Tuesday. So you've got Tuesday, Wednesday, and at 7 o'clock on the Thursday or 7.30, we get turns up, um, sorry, uh, Colburn turns up and does a sweep. I don't. I don't see that as being five days. Uh, you know, but I mean, it, it's just preposterous, isn't it? It's just. It's just really, really ludicrous. Um, and and I think, 
you know, what um, what really annoys me is that this that you know when these when perhaps the prosecution and the experts get on the stand and and and, and tell us about this case against Stephen Brendan. They really are trying to insult our intelligence because we're not taken in. We're, we're simply not taken in by this ridiculous, this ridiculous account of what happened. You would have to be incredibly stupid to take in this bizarre story. But I'll leave you with a question. Are there people stupid enough to be taken in by this theory? Who are the type of people that would be duped by this story, that would be taken in and keep running with it? I think we know the kind of people that are stupid enough to be taken in by the ridiculous stories of Ken Kratz and the, and the state. And I think we've got a name for them, haven't we? They're called guilters. Bye for now.